Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be denesting an interesting radical. We have the cube root of 70 minus 22 times the square root of 7. And we're going to denest this radical, meaning that we're going to write it as a difference of two radicals. And this problem, where does that come from, right? This problem was actually suggested by XJ Will 1 a while ago, about two years ago. And in his comment, he mentioned that this is a harder problem. And I really appreciate this problem. I thought about it. And again, I have to admit, it's not easy. It's not very straightforward. But uh, it's worth the struggle. So let's go ahead and see how we can denest this radical. And I'm going to talk about some of the reasons why this can't be denested the normal way. The usual method does not work and then why and so on and so forth. So we're going to talk about those reasons as well. Okay, so let's get started. Now we have the cube root of 70 minus 22 root 7. So you would expect something like this to be when denested, if it were to be denested right away, then you would expect something like this, right? A minus B root 7. And when you cube both sides, you expect A and B to be rational numbers. Obviously, that's what uh, denesting means. Uh, you can write this uh, like that. And A and B, by the way, make a correction about some of my previous videos. And how did I run across this problem, right? Like something that was suggested two years ago, you might be questioning, right? Well, I was kind of searching some comments that, about denesting. And then this just came up and I'm like, wow, this is a really good problem. At, the, at that time, I hadn't thought much about it, but now I thought about it and yes, I'm able to solve it. Let's go with it. So when you cube both sides, it's not going to work. And let me tell you why this doesn't work. If you consider these two numbers and you can think about the conjugates, right? If this could be written as follows, then obviously it's positive counterpart or the plus counterpart, whatever you want to call that could be written like this, if A and B are rational, of course. And then there's an obvious reason for this. You can use the binomial theorem, so on and so forth. But after uh, multiplying these two things side by side, we're going to get something like this. The cube root of 70 squared minus 22 root 7 squared. It's going to be 22 squared times 7, whatever that number is, is supposed to equal A squared minus 7B squared, right? Now, here's the thing. If this could be denested, then you do want this number because A and B are rational. So this is going to be rational too, right? You want this to be the cube of a rational number. Make sense? But this number is actually equal to 1,512. And that's not the cube of a rational number. Obviously, it's an integer. So it has to be the cube of an integer. But that's not the case. Why? Because if you go ahead and write it as... 2 to the 3rd times 3 to the 3rd times 7, you're going to realize, yes, it has the 2 and the 3, but the 7 just messes everything up. Wait a minute. If we divide by 7, it'll be a perfect cube. And that's just perfect. So here's what we're going to do. That kind of gives you an idea. That gave me an idea about how to proceed, obviously. So a cube root of 70 minus 22 root 7. Now, we talked about dividing by 7. Of course, we're talking about something cubed. So inside uh, the radical, we kind of have to take out something. And guess what that's going to be? That is going to be square root of 7. And you're going to see in a little bit why this works. If you take out a uh, square root of 7, then it changes the whole dynamics. Obviously, uh, this is going to be like square root of 7 uh, is going to give you 7. And then you do need a 10. So it needs to be 10 root 7 there. That's what you're missing, right? In other words, you're dividing this by root 7 and then minus 22. Great. Now we're going to kind of take out the cube root of square root of 7. And I'll take a look at this. When you check these numbers out, when the, you square them and look at their difference, because that's what the conjugates bring in, right? You're going to realize, hey, this becomes 216. In other words, 1,512 divided by 7. Yes, 216 is a perfect cube. Yay, we can do it. Obviously, the cube root of 216 is equal to 6. So we kind of get the idea that the norm, or whatever you want to call that, the absolute value, not necessarily absolute, but I would probably norm is a more appropriate word, needs to be 6. But we'll see that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. 
if the cube root of 10 root 7 minus 22, oops, that's, so now we have the cube root of 10 root 7, we have the cube root of 10 root 7 minus 22, right? This could be denested based on our calculations. Now, we're going to suppose, since the root 7 actually comes from the integer, this is going to be in the form a root 7 minus b. Makes sense, right? It's not going to work the other way around. And then, of course, its conjugate is going to be the one with the plus sign, and the result is going to be a plus sign in this case. Makes sense? Now, let's go ahead and multiply these two things together one more time to get what we want. Now, we're going to get cube root of... Now, when you multiply these two things, you're going to get 216. And on the right-hand side, you're going to get 7a squared minus b squared. This is kind of like a Diophantine equation, isn't it? And we are supposed to solve it. Of course, cube root of 216 is 6. And guess what? We can easily solve this. Think about it. a equals 1, b equals 1 works. Awesome. So that means the cube root of 10 root 7 minus 22 can be written as root 7 minus 1. And you can check easily. Go ahead and cube both sides and you'll get the idea. But that's not the whole story. Here's the fun part. So we just said that, okay, cube root of 70 minus 22 root 7 can be split into the cube root of square root of 7 times 10 root 7 minus 22. And then we can go ahead and separate these. Cube root of square root of 7 times the cube root of 10 root 7 minus 22. So the whole thing cannot be denested directly, but this can be. Make sense? After taking out the bad 7. But what is the cube root of the square root of 7? It is just the 6 root. You multiply the in the indices, whatever. And then we kind of have to deal with this, right? But we know that the cube root of 10 root 7 minus 22 is equal to root 7 minus 1. So we could directly plug that in. So is that the answer? Let's make it nicer. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and distribute this, obviously. So it's going to be cube root of 7 times square root of 7 minus 6 root of 7. Wait a minute, I can still do something about this. Well, this is kind of like a hidden 2, right? I can go ahead and actually multiply this by a 3 and put a little cube here, and that's going to work, right? That's how radicals work. So now we have under the radical, the 6 root, we have 7 times 7 to the 3rd, and that just becomes... The 6 root of 7 to the 4th power, and now we can go ahead and reduce because this is basically 7 to the power 4 over 6, which can be written as 7 to the power 2 thirds, which can be written as the cube root of 7 squared, which can be written as cube root of 49. Okay, I hope that wasn't too much, real quick. And now we're going to go ahead and back substitute that, and the result, ta-da, are you ready? It's going to be the cube root of 49 minus the 6 root of... 7. And this is actually our original expression, cube root of 70 minus 22 root 7, the nested. And if you don't believe that, go ahead and cube, si cube both sides and you're going to see. Again, xj will 1. Thank you for the idea. This was a beautiful, beautiful problem and I'm glad to have solved it. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and keep up the good work. Bye-bye.